The actual statement of chain rule is, you want to find a derivative of some function y that has lots of x's in it? Then the way you do that is you chain together a bunch of related derivatives. We restate the original function in terms of some u, we introduce the substitution, and then we also differentiate that introduce thing, that substitution itself. We put those two derivatives together in this linked chain, and then we get the actual derivative we want, because these du's cancel. Now, what we did earlier this morning was we did this formally. We would say, let u equal, and we did this whole step, we did all the working. Okay? However, if we now just underneath where you've got that, right, let's just consider the fact that we can actually do this without having to, if we, once we feel comfortable, without having to go through all of this process if we're happy to do it comfortably in our heads, just like you've gotten more comfortable with uh, doing, say, x to the power of 9. Like, you can do that without having some stuff written down. You can say the derivative of x to the 9 is 9x nine nine x to the 8. You're like, oh, I've done this for a few days and I'm comfortable. Okay? Here's where you're going to get up. Let's consider y equals something like, let's go at x cubed plus x to the, we just said 9, right? Let's just go for 9. Okay? Now, we will come to the point where we can differentiate this with the chain rule, dy on dx without really having to think hard about formally introducing that substitution. Here's the way I'm going to suggest you do it. Okay? Those two derivatives that you got here and here, they kind of refer to the outside of the function, something to the power of 9, and the inside of the function, this x cubed plus x. Right? So what I'm going to do is read this. In fact, I'm going to get my other color here, put it over here. And I'm going to label these as the outside function, something, what's happening on the outside, something's being raised to the power of 9. And then there's the inside function, that's the thing that you would have substituted in, right? So let's do them one at a time. When you've got something raised to the power of 9, you guys just told me before, right? What happens to the 9? Um, nine. Comes out the front first, yeah. right? Then you've got, well in this case I've got this in here, x cubed plus x, and then what happened to the 9? Eight. Eight. It just drops down to 8. So, just look at what I did. That is the derivative of the outside. Something to the power of 9 becomes 9 something to the power of 8. It could have been x's, it could have been u's, it could have been t's, could be anything, right? There's the outside derivative. And now let's have a look at the inside. That's x cubed plus x tucked inside those brackets there. Can someone differentiate the inside there for me? 2x to the power of 2. Hmm, hold on, think carefully. The 3 comes out the, first, the front first, 3x, then it goes down. And then that's a plus 1. Full stop, end of story. That's the derivative. Now, why do I have this picture up here? I wonder if you've worked out by now, right? Essentially what we're thinking of is, you've got this big function on the outside. But then as you open it up, you just have like smaller functions kind of tucked away in there, right? I've only got one level inside, so it's like you open it up and there's one in there. But you could go further, we can, we can and we will give you more complicated functions where you just have to go from the outside, do that, then do the next layer in, differentiate that, and then do the next layer in, and then differentiate that, okay? Does that make sense? Inside, outside. Now, I want to give you guys the opportunity, because we didn't really, we just kind of said, here it is, um, to have a look at, I think it's 7e. I introduced 7d this morning, and I know it's a bit criminal, you know, we're in the extension course, sorry guys. 7e is going to have the chain in it, so even if you're not, well, I expect no one has finished 7d right now, unless you had like a million free periods in between period zero and now. Um, you're probably still in 7D, but I still actually want you, while this is relatively fresh in your mind, to have a go at these introductory questions in 7E. You can, you can come back to 7D later on. That's right, for homework. So, we're going to have a look at this. So, how many more people until... 7E is where you're looking at right now. Yes, Laura. What was the answer to that question? Like the second one? What was the question? 3x Say that again. 4. Oh, right, right, right. Yes, thank you. Let me get rid of this so we've got some space. 4 over. Can you repeat it again? 3x plus 2. Oh, thank you. Very good. Okay. So. 
if this is our function, and I'm going to do it just like we did over here, right? I'm going to first write this in a nice form to differentiate. So instead of having this on the bottom, I'm going to write it with a negative index. Can someone help me out? What would the negative index be? Negative 3, very good. So at this point, I'm ready to go. I've got a thing on the outside, an outside function, and then I've got an inside function. I'll do them one at a time. Let's do the outside. What effect does this 4 have? I can, yeah, I can just write it out the front, okay? And then I start to process this guy over here. I'm going to multiply by negative 3 like suggested, okay? I've got this other thing, and then what happens to the power? Drops down 1. So now I've just dealt with the outside. That's the outside function, the something to the power of negative 3. Now I deal with the inside. What's the derivative of the inside? Three. It's just 3. So let's tidy this up a little bit. For starters, I've got 4 times negative 3 times 3. Negative uh, 36, thank you. And then I'm also going to, do you remember this morning I said, if you got handed something with no negative indices, it's kind of nice to hand it back in the same form. So that's why I'm putting this guy right down the bottom. Like so. There you go. Is that right? 